Hi everybody, good morning. Welcome to our morning meetings. We're going to be taking our painted turtle, Lotus, for a little walk today. Hi Lotus, hello. Um, she is our painted one of our painted turtle ambassadors and she is very sweet and exciting, t excited to, uh, to go on a little walk with us. So uh, we're going to see if she you know, wants to explore a little bit. She is certainly raring to go. Uh, you can see, good morning. Hi. Um, she is very little for a painted turtle. So the painted turtles that you see in the wild may look quite a bit bigger than this. Um, Lotus was originally found in somebody's home um, and they were, they had abandoned their house and left two little painted turtles in a bucket of murky water without any way for these guys to haul out and bask. So Miss uh, Lotus here actually developed a, a very bad infection called shell rot that is just basically an overloading of bacteria on the skin or on the shell and it causes it to be really um, squishy and um, and rot away. So Lotus has been recovering from that since we got her. It's been about four years now. Um, and she's actually looking better than she ever has. It just takes a really long time and she certainly couldn't survive in the wild with some of the shell deformities that she has now. Um, so we will kind of get a better look at her, but we're gonna see if she wants to go for a walk. Hello everybody, good morning Katie, good morning Kim. Good morning, Rebecca and Xander. Good morning, Beth. Hello. Good morning, Zoe. Um, so Lotus is a painted turtle. Sometimes we call these guys sun turtles because they're famous for sitting on a rock and basking in um, on a pond or in the water. And what they're doing is they're trying to kill off the uh, bacteria and um, and pathogens that get onto their shell when they're in the water and the UV rays actually help them out a lot to kill all those bacteria. So um, it's really important to give these guys a good place to bask. They have to get up to a certain temperature. They have to have UV light and Miss Lotus unfortunately didn't have any of those so she now has shell rot issues. Um, her shell has grown back and grown in amazingly well so if you actually see these little puzzle pieces on her back did not used to be there. She used to just be one, um, have one kind of large squishy shell. Um, so those have developed in the last couple years and she just actually went through probably the best shed that she's ever had where um, she'll actually shed off the top layers of her, of her scutes and those all came off in little puzzle pieces which is uh, normal, but for Lotus that has never happened before. So we're really excited um, and she is shed and looking great. Uh, good morning, Catherine, Madeline, and Evelyn. Hello. Um, hi, Carol. Hello. Um, so I'm going to, good morning, Josh. Hi. I'm going to put the camera on Lotus so we can see her take a little walk and please remember that I'm always happy to answer questions about Lotus, about any of the ambassadors here while we're walking her around. Um, she is a tiny little turtle so she may take a little bit of time to warm up and get, get zooming but hopefully soon she'll be on the move. Um, we call these guys painted turtles because of the beautiful stripes that they have on their skin and on their um, on their shell. So they look like someone has come along with a paintbrush and painted the side of their face. Nice job. Um, so that is why we call them painted turtles. We'll come over here. Hello, good morning. Um, something that is interesting is that painted turtles do have webbed feet, so they do have webbed toes, and they are not usually seen walking around on land like Miss Lotus is. They're very well evolved for being in the water, so they have a very um, sh narrow shell that will cut right through the water. They have those webbed feet to help push the water. Um, so walk, taking a walk is something that's good for her enrichment, but it's not something that we would normally see a lot of painted turtles doing. This time of year, we do see them taking little treks to where they need to go to lay their eggs. And we do see a lot of turtles crossing roads this time of year. 
So if you've ever seen a turtle crossing the road, um, the best thing to kind of do to help out in that situation. Thank you so much, Maggie. That's so sweet. Um, there is a donation button on this video, like with all of our videos. Thank you so much for donating. We really appreciate it. It goes right to support the care of Miss Lotus here. What do we think? Um, so yes, so these guys are on the move quite a bit more in the springtime. Um, they're going to be laying their eggs and uh, and uh, traveling down to uh, areas that will be good nesting sites for them. So usually they spend the uh, the winter underwater um, in a pond or a lake, and they will actually not come up to even breathe throughout much of the winter. They really are under there for a long, long time. Um, and then in the springtime when the water thaws out, they will, um, hi. Hi. Can you call the office? Did I? Or can, can you? No. No? No. You don't have a? I don't. Oh, okay. Um, let me just knock on the door and get someone okay. real quick. I, actually, I have some gloves and a mask in my truck. But okay. Yeah, if you want to go grab those, that would be great. All right. So we have an admission, everybody. That's exciting. And pause for that. Good morning, Lexi. Hello. All right. Let's go tell our clinic team. Hello. We are recording. We have a um, we have an admission. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's let's resume our walk with Lotus. Sorry for the interruption, guys. We are still operating our medical clinic, so we um, we do take admission. So I just grabbed somebody from the clinic. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Sue and Lexi. I'm gonna come over here and let Lotus walk around a little bit over here so that we don't interrupt them. All right, back to business. Thank you guys for um, for your patience. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, we have just been doing our admissions a little bit differently. So we've had people calling the clinic to check in, and then we'll come out to get um, the patient and their information from them. I know. Hi, baby. Uh, good morning, Lexi and Abby. Hello. Uh, good morning, Nicole. Hi. So, uh, so about these guys nesting and crossing roads and we do see them very active right now the best thing that we can do to kind of help them out when they are trying to cross roads is really just help them on their journey um, to get to where they need to go so usually these guys are going to a somewhat more upland sandy area from where they were uh, spending the winter and they will go to try to um, to lay their eggs there and, and many times they do have to cross lots of roads to get to those areas where they can nest and this is just because they have been nesting in the same places for years but we have since built roads there and unfortunately these guys have to maneuver around them to get uh, to where they're going so these guys uh, are often seen crossing roads many times what we can do to help is just kind of usher them across the road if we see that so just keeping our eye out and being aware that these guys may be crossing is really important and then if we do see one and it's safe to do so you can stop you can pull over and um, <clears throat> and kind of usher these guys around across the road it is safe to pick up a turtle like this but you would want to wear gloves if you had them and then wash your hands afterwards but usually they're so fast they really do run quite quickly across roads when there's a person you kind of just end up chasing them across the road which is still good because we it can help to make sure other motorists know that you're around and help to make sure that these guys don't get hit by a car so um, it is still good to have um, to have a little supervision what are you doing yeah um, let's see. Joshua asks how thick their shells are. Their shells are pretty thick, Josh. They have, um, 
let's see, so if you can see up close, they have a thick layer of bone that is, um, that covers most of their body. It is actually attached to their spine. So you can see that line going down the middle of her back. Her backbone runs right along underneath there. So these shells actually connect to their uh, to their spine. A lot of people ask, you know, like if these guys are like hermit crabs that they can change their shells out, but their shells actually are there when they hatch. They are born with their shells or hatched with their shells and they grow with them through time. So they have a pretty thick shell. You can see it's probably a couple like millimeters thick. Um, she does have some thickening of this top shell up here because of the issues she's had with her shells in the pa her shell in the past. Um, so the shell actually doesn't extend as far as it needs to. This is another reason why she can't go back out into the wild. I don't know if you guys can see, this is where her lower shell ends and her top shell should be coming up to meet that, to protect her neck and it's not. And it's partially because, let me flip her over so you guys can see. Um, it's partially because of this. This um, was caused by her shell rot. Basically it rotted through the sides of her shell and it causes this top shell to have poor blood supply and it really stunted the growth of this front part of their shell. So they are not able to, she's not really able to grow uh, very much beyond that point. We'll hopefully see some improvement as she gets a little older but she, um, she's kind of got this stunted shell and that would leave her really vulnerable to predators in the wild. They could come along and just chomp down and you know, they would be able to have access to her neck and her throat. So that's not good. Um, she also has a lot of other shell issues. You can see her back legs are almost totally exposed. Um, and this shell is really almost kind of too small for her body. Uh, because of that stunted growth. So she is probably somewhere between like six and eight years old um, and she should be about twice as big as she is um, and just because of her her time spent without nutrition and without um, proper care she is kind of teeny now. Um, let's see, Keith would like to know, are there any box turtles still in Maine? Um, Keith, there may be, they are considered endangered in the state of Maine. And um, before they, before recently, they have really only been found in like Southern Maine. So York, Cumberland counties were really the only places where they occurred naturally. and their numbers have been declining because of a lot of development. Of course, those are the most populous areas of Maine as well. So unfortunately, uh, there are not many. I've never seen one in the wild here, um, but they are still counted as one of Maine's species. So I think they they are still around. They're just very few and far between. Um, and it is partially because their range really ends in Maine. Um, so they were already kind of less common. And then also because of all the development that we've had in their habitat. Um, but as we see uh, climates warming, we may encounter these guys changing their range to be more northward. So they may start um, using Southern Maine more and more as it gets a little warmer, we'll see. Um, Mary would like to know what causes shell rot. That's a great question. Um, so shell rot is usually caused by a, an accumulation of bacteria on the shell. And there's bacteria in the water a lot and it's normal. And um, the way that these guys deal with all that bacteria is to bask. Um, so when they bask, they will, um, they will go on a log and they will kind of warm themselves in the sun. They'll let the UV rays directly hit their shell and their skin. And that actually helps to kill off any of that bacteria. So a lot of times we uh, think of UV rays as being bad and they're bad for like our skin. But for these guys who have um, a need for those UV rays, they're actually really great. And when we, uh, when we, design their enclosures when we are purchasing materials and lighting for them they have to be uv emitting bulbs that we get that we buy to make sure that these guys can keep their shells safe 
Um, and so what that does is kill off the bacteria on their shell. And what happened to Miss Lotus here is when she was very young, she was uh, kept in this murky bucket of water and she was actually left in an abandoned house and she didn't have any way to get out and bask. So that bacteria just accumulated on her shell and caused it to get eaten away by that bacteria. So it's kind of, um, it was really squishy when she first came into us. She, um, she really didn't like the light. She was really what we call photosensitive. So she didn't like to bask. She was very, um, it kind of was almost painful for her to bask because she had never really encountered that. So we had to slowly, slowly introduce her to it. Um, and over time, she has learned to love basking. She behaves like a normal turtle, but she's still left with a lot of the issues. So I don't know if you can see up close, but her shell is not perfectly smooth. You can see she still kind of has some bumps on her shell, some little uh, pockets, um, divots kind of where she's still recovering from that and it will take years it's been four years since we got her she was about the size of maybe like a quarter or a little bigger when we got her and she's grown quite a bit and now her shell is kind of catching up hi Ryan from Chicago thank you so much for watching hi Eli hello um, Eli, I am not sure how many bones she has. That's a great question. Um, I think each of those scutes is counted as, where are you going? It counts as one bone. Um, they each have a growth plate in them just like our bones. So it could be quite a bit. I'm not sure though, and I'm sure it's a lot different for different types of turtles. That's a great question though. What I've looked up, um, what I've realized in looking up your um, questions about bones is that we don't know a lot. <laughs> um, I had a really hard time finding out how many bones like a Merlin has. That was really interesting to me. I had to look for quite a while. Um, but yeah, so we are not, I'm not really sure and we'll, we'll definitely look it up for you. Uh, thank you guys so much. We, if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. We're gonna try to intercept little Lotus before she gets anywhere near this water over here. We don't want her going in there. <laughs> it's uh, it's not a real pond, so she would be contained, but. Nice job. What's the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? That's a really great question. So turtles are generally considered to be aquatic. They will live in or near water. And then tortoises are generally considered to be land dwelling. There are exceptions to that. Box turtles, for example, are a non-aquatic turtle. They don't live on in the water. They can't swim, but they do live near water. They live near like vernal pools and ponds and things. So they are counted as a land turtle. Um, but really the biggest difference is that is their genetics is how closely they are related to each other. So turtles are in one family and tortoises are in another family. And they do have some differences in, you know, habitat that they prefer, but um, generally, you can say aquatic equals turtle and terrestrial equals tortoise, but there are always exceptions to these rules that we and generalizations that we put out there. Uh, Xander asks, how long do painted turtles live? So these guys can live up to like 20 years in, um, in the wild. They, um, they can live a little bit longer in captivity, so we will have these guys for quite a while. We think that she is somewhere around six to eight years old. And then her buddy Blossom is probably somewhere between eight and 10 years old. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but we have a, a our resident great, um, Broadwing Hawk, Gracie is making her calls. She probably sees some visitors overhead. Our, great, our Broadwing Hawks are migrating back to our area right now. So she's calling to them and saying, hi, that's her. She is very sweet and excited. Uh, Perry Nash, if a turtle was to get flipped over on its back, can it flip itself back over on its own? That is actually a really great question. Yes, they can. So um, you can see, where are you going? Bye. <laughs> you can see that um, if a turtle would, was to get flipped over on its back, which could happen, it could like fall off a log or something, it would be pretty hard for them 
to maneuver themselves back over. But um, these guys have figured out a way to do it. They will actually arch their neck, extend their neck all the way backwards and put their beak on the ground um, behind them. So it's kind of like doing a back bend. And then they'll use their beak as a pivot to flip themselves over. So if you've ever um, seen like a horseshoe crab use its little tail spike to do that, it's the same sort of motion. So they'll use, they'll stretch their head straight back and then they will um, arch and kind of turn over to one side and use their beak as a pivot. So um, they're actually pretty, pretty, pretty agile. They can flip themselves over pretty well. That's a great question. Thank you so much, Kim, for donating. That's so, so sweet. Hi, Sue. Hello. Uh, she's having so much fun. She definitely loves exploring. Um, we have these guys in a tank inside that is an aquatic tank, so it does have water in it. She does love swimming, but um, she loves just exploring and walking around. What Something that we think is so funny is just how funny uh, Miss Lotus is. She's really outgoing. Uh, both of our, our painted turtles are very outgoing. They like to say hi to people when they visit the center. Um, and they're very social. These guys are actually pretty social turtles with each other. They are often seen in groups. They'll be sitting on, um, on top of one another. They'll make a little stack of turtles. They're competing over those UV rays that we talked about. But, um, but they do usually live with other turtles nearby. They might not have a lot of like social interactions, but they do live around other turtles. And her and Blossom really are funny together. Um, Lotus will kind of play tag with Blossom. Blossom will chase her around and then like try to, uh, like in a mean way, but in a, in a fun way. And then, um, if she stops chasing her, I've actually caught Lotus going back in front of Blossom and being like, wait, we were playing a game. What are you doing? Come back. So they do like to play together. It's very cute. Where are you going, buddy? She's so sweet. She's on the move. These guys are actually very quick, um, especially if you find one that is trying to cross the road and you're trying to help it out. Normally, they will, um, they will just outrun you. They're very, very fast. You gonna climb? What do you think? These guys also are predators, so a lot of folks don't realize these guys are uh, eating live animals. They have to chase down prey in the water, usually other aquatic insects or fish. And uh, they have to be quite fast. So their shells need to be uh, in a certain shape to make sure they can cut through the water. Um, they usually are very, very sh um, thin and um, they kind of, they're very, what we say, hydrodynamic, hydrodynamic, so they can cut right through the water very quickly. And they also, uh, because they are walking around on logs and hunting for insects, they do have these sharp claws. I don't know if you guys can see them that well. They have sharp, sharp claws. There you go. And they also have a little beak that has two little teeth on it. They're not really teeth. They're just little grooves on her beak. She's like, let me go. I was, I was running around. Um, but they have these two little teeth that are just little stick, um, little, little grooves that stick out that help them to crunch, crunch up insects. So they are actually predators. Mary would like to know, does everyone at the center work with all the different animals? So uh, for the most part, yes, um, uh, there are definitely animals that like I have not worked with before on the clinic side and that the clinic has not worked with on the ambassador side. But um, for the most part, we are all able to handle um, all of the ambassadors. Um, the medical clinic does all of the medical exams on our ambassadors, so they definitely need to be able to handle all of these guys. I you know, have some like handling experience for uh, most animals. So it really, it really just depends on who needs to be with working with these guys. So um, the medical clinic might not get as much time to spend playing with these guys, but they're very sweet and definitely helpful in um, helping us to take care of them. Okay. If anyone has any other questions about, ooh, little lotus here 
I can definitely answer them. She's very sweet and ready to go continue exploring. You can see how she would blend right in with water really nicely with um, like the the surface of water that uh, the yellow and red stripes are kind of to mimic um, any sort of aquatic plants that there might be around. She's definitely having a good time. She's not shy at all. This little girl is quite the trooper. We've had her ever since she was um, discovered in that abandoned house and she's just made such an amazing recovery we're very proud of her um, and that's why we actually named her lotus because she emerged from the murky waters and is a beautiful beautiful little girl yeah how many turtles would typically live together in the wild so um it just depends on the size of the pond how many turtles would be living there i've seen like three or four of these guys all kind of huddled up together on a log but um you know, in a, it depends on kind of the capacity of that pond, how many of these guys it can support. They're not necessarily limiting their um, their populations or anything. Nice job, Miss Lotus. Good girl, you're so cute. Yeah, you can really see those teeth very well on her beak. They do not feel good if she decides to bite, which she does not usually do. She's very sweet. Good girl. I know, I know. You can see she's kind of stretching her neck back a little bit. That's that pivoting thing. So sometimes when these guys are trying to move and they can't, um, they will stretch their necks back and be like, oh, this is what I do when I can't move. I'll stretch. How heavy is she? Um, she's probably like a pound. She doesn't weigh very much, but she has dense bones. So she does weigh something. She's not like our little owls. I know. Nice job. I'm going to go put... Miss Blossom back so she can join, or Miss Lotus back so she can join Blossom. Nice job. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. And definitely tune in tomorrow for Kristen and Maeve. And we'll see you all later. Thank you guys.